Welcome to Three Steps to Sketch. In this video, we are going to solidify our understanding of the method for graphing basic secant graphs by using it to graph y equals secant x. Now, you probably know what this graph looks like, whether you've made a t-table or just seen the graph, um, but we're actually going to use the Three Steps to Sketch method so that we can then apply it to more advanced examples. So let's get started. Okay, here's our template. Um, it'll help us keep all our information organized. And here's a nice grid to work on. So we can see that this equation, y equals secant x, is in our basic general form, which is y equals a secant of bx. And knowing that, we can jump into step one, where we're going to find the companion equation and then identify its essential information. So we know that the companion equation to a secant equation is going to be cosine. So our companion equation will be y equals cosine of x. Okay, so now let's find the information for this companion graph. Okay, we see that a is clearly one, it's an understood one as the leading coefficient, and b is the coefficient of x, which is also one. So that tells us we should have one cycle of our secant graph our companion cosine graph, and then of course still of our secant graph, that'll happen between zero and two pi. And it'll also help us calculate our period. So to do that, we just need to take two pi and divide by b. So our period, or the length of one horizontal cycle for both the companion graph cosine and the graph that we want secant will be two pi. And remember, that's just the horizontal length of one cycle. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and decide on some scale labels. So with this method, we like to set our horizontal scale, taking the period and dividing by four. So two pi divided by four is going to give us pi over two. So that's what we'll count by for our horizontal axis. And then for our vertical scale, one should work well. Okay, so that's all the information we'll use for our companion graph. And that's what we're gonna plot in step two. Um, so let's go ahead and label our scale or our axes. So horizontally, we're counting by one pi over two, so that's one pi over two, two pi over two reduces to pi, three pi over two, four pi over two reduces to two pi, and five pi over two. All right, and then take a second to label in the on the negative side of the horizontal axis, so all the same values as the positive side, but just with negative signs. So we've got that. And now let's label our vertical axis, counting by ones. Easy enough. All right. Now the last bit of information we want to gather before we get into the actual graphing um, is to find the asymptotes equation. And we're going to do this for our secant graph. So it's very easy to do this as long as you remember you're looking for uh, the places, the values of x, where your secant is undefined. And so secant is just one over cosine, so we just don't want our cosine to be zero. And we know our basic cosine function is zero at pi over two plus pi k. So take your horizontal inputs of your original function, and we set it equal to pi over two plus pi k. And since this is just the parent function secant, we don't have to solve for x because it's just one x equals um, pi over two plus pi k. And we know that this will be the equation that will give us all of our asymptotes for our graph. Um, all you have to do to find each of them is plug in integers for k because k is an integer. So let k equal zero, we should have an asymptote on our final graph at pi over two. Um, if you let k be one, with some simplifying, you'd see there should be another asymptote at three pi over two. Um, you could let k be negative one. Simplify, you'll get an asymptote that happens at negative pi over two. So hopefully that helps you see how it works. Um, I'll post probably a few videos that go into a lot of detail um, with some advanced examples on these asymptotes of secant graphs. All right, so now that we've gathered and organized all our information, we're ready to move on to step two where we will plot our companion pattern. So we're going to plot the cosine pattern that came from up here. Okay, we know a cosine pattern goes maximum zero, minimum zero. 
and we know it's unreflected, and that's why we'll start with the maximum. So on the y-axis, we have a companion pattern point. We'll lightly mark this, or I'll mark it in orange, at 0, 1, and you get that y-coordinate just looking at the value of a. Okay, we know that there should be a 0 at pi over 2. Move to the next horizontal tick mark, and our y-coordinate will be the opposite value of a, so negative 1 and another zero at three pi over two, and then our companion pattern would repeat. So just very lightly, you can see that this would be our graph if we were graphing y equals cosine x. Okay, so now that we have our companion pattern graphed, we're ready for step three. So this is the big one. We will recip, sketch, and repeat. So we're going to actually convert our companion pattern into the reciprocal graph, which is secant, the one we want. Um, so we should know what the secant graph looks like, but if you take the reciprocals, the reciprocal of one is just, of course, one. Think about a point right about here would be one half. So the reciprocal of one half is two. Okay, so we have the curve that starts like this. We know that the original zero of our companion graph or x-intercept turns into an asymptote. So this light blue graph is our final graph. And you can see as you take the reciprocal of negative one, you can do the negative one halves, which turn into negative twos. You have this part of the secant curve forming. And at three pi over two, we have another original zero or x-intercept from our companion graph. So that is a vertical asymptote. And then we would finish off here at two pi with what we call a local minimum. So that's a minimum for the particular area of the graph. So we formed the reciprocal, reciprocal graph, and we kind of went ahead and sketched as we were forming, as we were taking the reciprocals. So now we can just repeat, and you can do this for as many cycles as you need. So starting here, we can work our way in the positive direction. You see another asymptote happens at 5 pi over 2. Um, notice we had talked about earlier there should be asymptotes at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. We see those forming. Okay, let's continue the pattern in the negative direction. So there's the asymptote we talked about at negative pi over 2. So we're just continuing this pattern just like it's a stamp. We repeat it over and over again. Okay, we'll have a local maximum here with this part of a secant curve. Another asymptote will happen at negative 3 pi over 2. A local minimum here sets this curve and another asymptote at negative 5 pi over 2. So you can see it just repeats the pattern over and over and over again. All right, so this was using three steps to sketch to get a really nice graph of y equals secant x. And hopefully this helped you get a better understanding and a better grasp of the steps and how to work through them um, so that you can apply it to um, graphs that are a little bit more interesting than just the parent graph y equals secant x. Um, so you should be able to tackle any basic unshifted secant graph from this point forward. Um, I'll post links in the video description with more worked examples of secant graphs, so be sure to check those out, and thanks for watching.